Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. In our last segment, we were talking about investments. These are stocks and bonds that a company buys, not their own debt or their own stock, but stock in other companies and debt issued by other companies that these companies buy in order to grow, whether it's because they're trying to save or trying to develop a future cash flow or trying to get ready for a debt repayment, whatever the reason, companies do a lot of investing now in other businesses. Because of that, we really need to be comfortable with the way we treat these investments in accounting. And we talked not only about the major categories from a market perspective, debt, equity, but also about the four categories from an accounting perspective, trading, available for sale, held to maturity, and equity. Now that we've gone through and looked at these overall concepts, it's time to start doing some journal entries and some other calculations. Yes, my favorite part. So to start us off, let's talk about the steps to recording trading and available for sale securities. Now the very first step is actually to record the purchase, and I don't have that one on here. But basically whatever you pay for these securities gets capitalized or put into the asset account. Whether it's a trading portfolio or an available for sale portfolio, I would take the cash I pay for the actual security plus whatever I pay to my broker and all of that goes into this investment account. So it's a simple transaction, debit to the asset, credit to cash, done. So I didn't put that in the steps because I figured that was pretty self-explanatory. Once I've got it in my portfolio, then I start doing journal entries to record the fair value. And here are our steps. Number one, we're going to determine the fair value of each investment at its current market price. Two, we're going to add up the fair values of each investment in the portfolio to get a total portfolio value and then we'll compare that with the original historical cost so basically we're going to take the total fair value from step three and subtract the original historical cost from that total fair value the difference becomes the ending balance in our fair value adjustment account what FASB's decided is we need to keep track of both the historical cost and the fair value so we actually have two accounts so we have one account that has the security name so it could be cash equivalents or trading securities that would be a trading security title either of those it could be expansion fund debt repayment fund growth fund pension fund they'd be available for sale securities that's what we're talking about here with these security names and they would have whatever we paid in the account then we have another account that's called a fair value adjustment account and that account is sort of a contra asset so that sometimes it's got a credit balance like a contra asset normally has and reduces the value and sometimes it's got a debit balance and actually increases the value but we're going to add these two accounts together and that's going to give us our fair value so we keep the original amount paid in this account and over here we want the ending balance to be the growth or the drop in value of this portfolio. So that's what we're doing with this step three is we're deciding what do we need this balance to be at the end of the period so that the two of these accounts together give us the fair value. So just to give it a really simple example, let's say I bought a stock for $100. And at the end of the year, it's worth 110. So somehow I've got to get this value to be 110. So what I do is I put $10 in this account. Then when I take the 100 plus the 10, I end up with my 110. So what this step three is, is we're trying to decide what this value has to be so that I can add them up and get to the fair value. Step number four is once I have this ending balance and I know the beginning balance, then I can determine what adjustment I need to make, what the journal entry needs to be so that I end up at this value. Once I know that, finally, I get to the journal entry. If I've got a debit to the fair value adjustment account, then I would credit an unrealized gain. If I had to credit my fair value adjustment account, like we have in this example here, then I would need a debit, and a debit would be a loss. So we have an unrealized loss. One last quick note, just before we move on and do an example here. When we sell off part of our portfolio, we don't touch the market adjustment account. So make a note of that somewhere, that you don't touch the market adjustment account when you sell them. Why? Because our fair value adjustment account helps us reconcile the value of the portfolio we own 
with what we paid for that portfolio. It doesn't do anything with sales, so we're just going to leave it out of a sales transaction, and we'll revalue it or readjust it when we get to the end of the next period. Now that's a lot of conceptual stuff that I just threw at you. Let's do an example that I hope will solidify this process. We want to start out by making any necessary journal entries to record the purchase of 10,000 shares of XYZ at $5 a share and 7,000 shares of TCB at $2 a share on July 15th, year one. And I have a quick confession to make before we go on. That is, when I wrote this problem, I decided to be a little sneaky and give myself a very important reminder. July 15th is actually my wedding anniversary. And I figured if I put it into a problem like this twice a year when I talk about it with my classes, I'd remember this important date. So I'd like to say that I just pick dates randomly and you know there's no emotional attachment to any of them, but, but there is to this one so that I make sure that I don't get in trouble with my wife. Let's make the journal entries for miles plus. First thing we need to do is figure out what they spent on these shares. So for XYZ, they bought 10,000 shares at $5 per share, so that's $50,000. And then TCV, we bought 7,000 shares at $2 each for a total of 14,000, so we paid a grand total of 64 thousand dollars. Now that I know this value, I'm ready to do a journal entry. Let's put in a line here so we can keep the two sets of journal entries separate. If we are planning to actively trade these securities, then they'll be short-term or current assets, and we typically give them a name like cash equivalents. because these are stocks that are being sold on the open market and we can quickly and easily turn them back into cash. So this is kind of the hint or the signal to the market that we are actively trading these and can turn them to cash very quickly. 64,000 and of course we're paying cash for these. So we'll credit cash. If we intend to hold them for a long period of time, then instead of calling them cash equivalents, we'll typically call them some kind of a fund, and it's whatever we're saving for. So if we're saving to repay a debt, we call it a debt repayment fund. If we're saving to pay off a pension, then it's a pension fund. Um, one of the most common that we see is for companies that intend to expand, and they call it an expansion. Fund. FASB, again, doesn't have any formal rules for the names of these accounts. Cash equivalents is the most common name out there, so everyone tends to use it, uh, but you don't have to use that. Sometimes they'll call them investment short term or investments current. That's fine. Let's see, this is to record purchase of securities. And again, you could call these others investments long term, but it's more common to see companies name them by whatever it is they are saving for. Record purchase of securities. The reason that the name matters is because that's how they show up on the balance sheet is under the name of the account. And also that fair value adjustment account will be named to match up with whichever fund this is, since companies may have several long-term funds and a cash equivalents fund, then we want to keep our fair value adjustment separate for each one of those so that they can be netted together or shown together on the balance sheet. So as we move forward here, we're going to stick with expansion fund since that one's a little easier to write and also a little more commonly seen. So here's our next example. On December 31st, the value of XYZ has increased to $6 a share, and TCV has dropped to $1.50 a share. We want to make the necessary journal entry to record this change in value. So, step number one for changes in value is to figure out the market value of each portfolio, each stock in our portfolio. So, XYZ, we have 10,000 shares and they're selling for six dollars each so that's sixty thousand dollars TCV we have seven thousand shares they're selling for a dollar fifty 
so that's 10,500. Now step two is to add these up, so 7,500. We've lucked out with this example, there's only two, portfolio, two securities in our portfolio, but this could be a very, very long list depending on how much your company has invested and how diversified you are, etc. So that's step two. Step three, we're going to compare this value to the book value. So fair value is this number. Book value is whatever is down here in our securities account. So 64,000 even. And this difference, 7,500 minus 64,000 is 6,000. 500 and it's the desired ending balance in my fair value adjustment account. In this case the value has gone up since these are assets if I want it to go up I want a debit so $6,500. Now before we go any further let me just remind you what we're trying to accomplish here and that is we want to take this $64,000 over here plus this $6,500 and show in our balance sheet the $70,500. That's what we want. And if we add that up, that's what we get. Our next step is to back into the journal entry amount that gets us to the 6,500. So if I'm at zero and I want to go to 6,500, to from zero to 6,500, I need a debit of 6,500. And that's what my journal entries will need to be. Now let me pause right here. This is a key concept. You have to be comfortable with this, comparing fair value to historical cost gives you the ending balance in the fair value adjustment account. Let's go ahead and make our journal entry and the journal entry itself will look the same whether it's a short term or a long term stock investment. The only thing that's going to be different is the way that we label our fair value adjustment account. So in this case we're going to debit fair value adjustment expansion fund just to choose one. And again, you could use cash equivalents or debt repayment or whatever it is you've saved for, but you'll use the name of whatever account you initially put it into when you first purchased the stock. And that's going to be 6500 And then we'll have an unrealized gain. 6500 And this is an adjusting entry. for the change in market value. Let's take a look at another one. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. Let's do one more together. December 31st of year two, the stock price has changed again. We want to keep track of that change. So again, XYZ, 10,000 shares, 550 is 55,000. TCV, 7,000, one dollar per share is now only 7,000, so it's dropped a lot for a grand total of $62,000. That's step one, or excuse me, that's step one right here and step two right here. Step three, we're going to compare the fair value, 62,000, with the historical cost, which is whatever's in this available for sale trading account. Subtract that. This time we're in with a negative 2,000, which means I don't need a debit anymore. I've got to have a credit because this portfolio as a whole has dropped in value. So again, I want this to be my ending balance. So I come down here to my account. I want to end at $2,000. Remember, that's a key concept. That value is an ending balance. Got to understand that or this method doesn't work. Next step, step four, is to decide how do I get from the 6,500 to the 2,000? And the answer is I need a credit of 8,500. Think about it like a number line. If I'm way over here in the positive numbers at 6,500 and that's zero, and I need to get down here to 2,000, I've got to go to zero first and then 2,000 more, so I actually add them to get to that 8,500.
Let's go ahead and do this adjusting entry. Again, we're going to label that fair value adjustment account based on whatever we initially used when we purchased the securities. So we're going to stick with expansion fund, fair value adjustment, expansion fund. We'll abbreviate it a little bit this time. And now we have an unrealized loss. This is an adjusting entry. for the change in market value. Once you get this process down, hopefully you can see it really is straightforward and simple. Now, what I'd like you to do is take a look at this third year. Now, stock prices have changed again. XYZ is now selling for $7 a share. TCV is selling for $1.75. We need to make another set of journal entries. What we're going to do is stop right here and let you make the journal entries. And when we come back, we'll talk about what that journal entry should look like, and then we'll pick up from there with other fun parts of these examples, like what happens when we do sell off some of our portfolio. We'll see you then.